Good morning, folks. We've got a blank sun, no sunspots, and yet we've still got space weather. We've got California warnings, weather, and top science news starting at spaceweathernews.com, and we're finding that despite the complete lack of sunspots, solar flares, or eruptive behavior, we do still have the coronal holes. One of their faster streams began impacting overnight. Middle panel in purple, you see the plasma speed shooting up this morning. Nothing major just yet, just creeping up out of ambient quiet range now, but Earth's magnetic field shows the impact and building intensity even while still in quiet range. Top earthquake of the last day struck Indonesia. There were four blot echoes in the 48 hours that preceded it. Moving on to the forecasting, this is on the Weather Channel's weather.com homepage, and it is a legitimate question. But to answer, let me reference one of our tweets from about 7 to 10 days ago. In terms of long-term average for large earthquakes, the west coast of the USA is overdue. In terms of mid-range force shocks over the last few weeks, the energy appears to be building in terms of release at the faults. And they do have a ton of snow on the mountains that will melt and drive both weight distribution changes and ion changes due to the electrical effect of water flowing through porous rock. It all adds up to a high-risk period once that mountain snow really begins to melt. We've got our first city-level victim claimed by this year's collapsing monsoon. The day after the reservoirs ran dry, it began drizzling on Chennai, India, but the drops are barely wetting the ground before disappearing once more. Not so much in the Americas, where record rain has been afoot. We've got snow and much more snow coming tonight to parts of the Rockies. Let's move into forecasting the grand solar minimum. An excellent new paper finds that a runaway asymmetry breaks down the solar dipole field into quadrupole and which kills the sunspot cycle for some length of time. Normally, the asymmetry in sunspot appearance by hemisphere waxes and wanes. We are at the high point of asymmetry following the last cycle. Now, normally, we'd have to expect it to go back to symmetry and then start the oscillation all over. But if not, it signals the grand minimum is here. Now, while Zarkova excited many in the community by implying last year that we'd already passed the threshold, observers' stance is that we must watch closely this upcoming solar cycle, the one that's about to begin over the next year, to see if the asymmetry is reducing or getting worse. Let's run through some climate and solar forcing news. That enormous glacier in Greenland, the one that keeps growing and they can't figure out why, kept growing again for the third year in a row. It is noteworthy that the only way you get the mega Greenland ice loss reports like we've had this year is to have a ton of extra, new, and fragile ice form in the wintertime, such that it can be easily destabilized in spring. It is wonderful to see them working to update total solar irradiance. True enough, space energy won't get its due until particle forcing is wholly taken into account, but the irradiance measures could use a makeover as well as initial findings suggest up to a few percent error, which might not sound like much. But remember, they claim the sun only changes 0.1% over time, and these carbon dioxide changes we've got on Earth are in the parts per billion. Speaking of irradiance, we have solid evidence that the major changes noted about 3,500 years ago signaled a definitive matchup between Asian dust storms and solar activity. We also have data on how a tiny glitch in the homogeneity of the electron belts can cause cascades of electrons at very high energies to shoot down into the atmosphere. This is why space weather effect on the global electric circuit always, always outperforms the solar wind effect on the magnetosphere. Last but not least, we have a wonderful confirmation of what SLAC told us last year. The cosmic jets contain tangled magnetic fields wrapped up in the electric current of the system. They are even finding more patchy and more tangled up magnetism than they would have thought, which by the way is a signal of the extra strength of the electric currents and dominance of the plasma turbulence over the small scale self interactions. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.55 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.